Welcome to the Zero to Five Million Dollar Podcast. I'm Sean Finder, and I'm with my host, Ollie Whitfield. This show is brought to you by AutoClose, a vanilla soft company. Ollie, why don't you introduce today's guest, or even better yet, we have no guest today, but why don't you tell the audience what we're talking about today? First things first, um, audio listeners, you can't see this, but I've upgraded my background, and so have you. You're back home, there's no background noise, the dusty peloton is there, I'm happy. How, how does it feel to be back home? It a uh, few good things, you know. The, obviously, you know, there's nothing like home. The bed, the couch. The only thing is the weather outside. Having a nice house, but uh, the weather is uh, is snowy here. It's different than Florida, so um, you know, instead of um, instead of uh, going to the pool every afternoon, we're building igloos in the backyard. I guess that's what uh, that's what the new thing is. But it's uh, it's cold. But thanks for asking, Ollie. And the Peloton is back, and uh, hopefully, will be used a lot more this uh, this quarter than last quarter. Yeah, I expect so. Even one use would be more. Just putting it out there so that everyone knows. <laughs> now, speaking of all things cold, did you like that transition? I have four cold emails for us on my other screen, which I'm now looking at for us to review. And they came from a webinar we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I don't know if you're aware, Sean, but I tried to be uh, Steve Harvey. I know he doesn't host the show that we uh, we parodied. You guys look actually very much alike, actually. I think it's, it's the accent. Crazy. I kind of I play on that yeah, a little bit. So uh, And the mustache, I'm kind of getting there with that too. And the hair, actually, before too long, I'll probably be with that as well. But uh, I was the host of emailing with the stars, obviously dancing with the stars. So we had a final with two rounds, two contestants, which if you put that together, we have four emails. So we had a judging panel score them. And I want to go through uh, what you and I think of them because I didn't really get to say much. And, um, and for your context, everyone listening, they had three minutes to write this under time pressure. They did not have any context about anything to write before the show started it was literally context the time is on go under time pressure so the first round was uh because we recorded this just after the super bowl a couple weeks ago um it was basically the idea that you are going to pitch an enterprise company cmo for doing an ad in next year's game pretty much like forget about budget company size just the act of we want you to do an ad in next year's game we're like the provider of the ad network or something, right? So uh, we had Michelle Craig, who's a, who's a sales rep that I know, and here's her email. So subject line, tell me what you think of this. Don't get left on the bench. Off the bat, what do you think? Uh, not personalized at all. I mean, it's, it sounds a little bit like, you know, I don't know if I would open it so far. I mean, it sounds, don't like it. I would I, I'd probably get very similar message like that. It, it doesn't intrigue me yet. Because I don't know what you're really asking for or what you're talking about if it's a cold email. I agree, but I like um I can see like the drawing the dots between the game, the the uh, the eventual ask and a contextual event. But I don't know if it's like obvious enough for me to get to, to draw the lines. Like you said, I, I don't know if I uh, before I read this, before I know it's about the Super Bowl, do I understand that? <laughs> It's going to be about yeah, that. You say don't leave, don't be left on the bench. You could also be thinking like, you know, don't be left behind your competitors. Like, you know, you're they're doing something that they're and then they're and then in my head I'd be like, okay, they're going to just sell me on something because they want to. They know I'm using you know HubSpot and they want to sell me on Salesforce. So I, I don't know. It's not there's not enough meat in that to get me to maybe I'll open it sometimes if I have nothing else to. But it's not something I'll be you know if it comes to my email I'm going to be like oh, I want to click this. Not yet. Yeah, but this is getting a bit further into it, but. I think the the effect they're trying to do here, like if I was to redo the subject line, it would be something like, don't be like Jalen Hurts in the fourth quarter. I know that's way too long. But like that's much more obviously about the Super Bowl. And you're like, what? And then you go from there. I know it's too long, but anyway. See, when I think of the Super Bowl, I would probably have something about Rihanna or halftime in my subject line. Yeah, and that'll probably be more practical based on what they're trying to sell as well so yeah anyways let's uh, let's go into the email real quick so it goes um and bear in mind they have three minutes there's not a real person that they're not sending this to so it's not like they could look at me and reference my podcast or whatever so yeah it's, it's tricky but what what you just said is very relevant too so michelle goes hi jeff i loved your conversation with ollie on the cmi podcast around breaking into new audiences through creative strategy um in the time pressure she's not been able to craft a value prop and then she's got the call to action of worth the chat so obviously we're assuming adds the value prop between the first bit and the, and the last bit um so with three minutes in mind and obviously not a real trigger event that she could look at what do you think so i like the way they start but they they referencing something that 
she's heard in the past, but a lot of people do something similar. Though I would just extend that and be like, so what did you like about my discussion with Ollie? So I had a discussion with Ollie. I enjoyed it. Great. But what did you enjoy? If you can actually prove to me that you actually listened to it and not just saying you did, that would be more intriguing to me. Yeah. I think um, obviously difficult to do that without a real person to uh, to do it on. But for example purposes, I could send that to – like it sounds like it's personalized and it, you could say it is. But you can also do that at fairly good scale. So for instance, I could send one to you and any other group of people. All I have to do in my like Excel upload to whatever tool I'm using is put like name and the event. And I word in the uh, the personalization token into my email. It, it looks the same. So yeah. I think uh, that's that's a valid point. And the, the way that they ended that, so to read again, loved your conversation with Ollie on the CMO podcast around breaking into new audiences through creative strategy. Last part of that is kind of through creative strategy. Like, does that like align too much with the super wide? Arguably the super wide is the least creative thing that you can do because it's like obvious. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, small small marks off me for that. But once again, under under time pressure. Any last thoughts before I go to Nick's email? No, I think that's, I think, I mean, I, overall, I think, you know, there's a few thing, things that we can take from that is the one is referencing somebody that you, you know, in common. Um, I think the subject line was short and sweet, but it, it could have been a little more juicier to get that person to open the email. Like we've talked about many times, if you can't open the email, you're not going to get your email read. So you might as well really spend time on focus on that, that email subject line and that first line. Uh, but overall, decent, decent email. I mean, you, we have to remember the person's not sitting here doing grammar checks for 12 minutes. It's a three minutes under time crunch. So um, pretty good. Yeah. So our other contestant was uh, was Vanilla Sauce's very own Nick. And, uh, and his effort in the subject line. So let's review that again first like we just did. While it's hot, explanation point, Super Bowl with a football emoji, a uh, like stars in the eyes emoji and a celebration emoji. What do you think of that? I mean, I, I I would say the subject content, the wording, maybe not, but I do like the emoji, the little twist there with the football. Um, so I would give the emoji, I give some points there because then it doesn't matter what you really write, you already know it's about football because of the emoji. But again, you know, if it depends on who your audience is, um, I know there's a ton of you know, not to say, but you know, a ton of. Like my wife, and my wife actually loves football, but there's a lot of women that watch football strictly, and even guys strictly for Rihanna. So the majority of the audience, sometimes people don't even watch the football. They just come for halftime. So I would think, you know, doing, uh, you know, something, I would even say like, you know, halftime versus football, like something to compare, you know, what are you more into with the football so they know. Um, but overall, I like the emoji twist. I think the content of the front could have been a little bit, uh, a little bit more distinct. Yeah, so I, I agree. While while it's hot, being the first three words of the subject line, um, I think is a is something we could use better. Super Bowl with the three emojis, I think, is like a pretty par thing to use. While you've got a a relevant, timely thing to use, you'll get a incrementally better open rate potentially. Um, but but that's it. There's no like, crazy tactic. Probably my angle would have been if I could have researched it. If um, I would say because it's about the ads, and often the ads are kind of viral anyway. So for instance, like Prime, the uh, the drink by like Logan Paul and KSI, that's like blowing up in the world, especially in England. They had an ad, and obviously they couldn't have known Prime, that. the energy drink. Yeah, that's like going super super viral. That's, that's uh, Logan Paul's uh, that's it. drink. Yeah, yeah. So something like that, them having an energy drink, or Mr. Beast was in one. Or like John Wick, obviously Keanu Reeves, he was in one a couple of years ago. Like if I knew if it was about you and I had the time to do this, they didn't. I would go like Roger Federer, Super Bowl ad, or, you know, it tying something to you to an ad. Because yeah. then you can picture it of going, what? Roger Federer wasn't an ad. And then when you open it, I can discuss something like you being a big tennis fan. Wouldn't it be super cool if you could get Roger Federer to advertise all the clothes? Yeah. And then you can connect yeah. that. So anyway, um, going to the email. So Nick goes, hey, James, Acme, meaning like any companies, full season ad caused quite a big buzz during 2022. Uh, our guys are still talking about um, one of the particular ads at the Super Bowl, so kind of what I said. Kudos to the team behind that. 
We're reaching out to top performing ad VIPs to guarantee their spot in 2023's Super Bowl season. Um, so basically saying like to get your ad confirmed. Here's a little peek at the 2022 ad performance and he wants to insert a video where he goes through some of the headline stats like viewership, uh, web traffic increases and whatever else. Ready to hit 100 million viewers in one go? Question mark. And that's his call to action. So what do you think of that? So not not too bad, but I would actually have moved stuff that he said at the end to more the, at the beginning. That's what I think too. Yeah. So so I would I would I would start off by saying, you know, if I can get you ten million views for you know in in, thir- in a thirty second ad, you know, etc. I would talk about the benefits of what you can get right at the beginning of the first two lines because to be honest, I would have read that and I would have never watched the video. But if you started off with stuff from the video, be like. Ooh, well, you know, maybe I could get a return on this investment. Maybe I could do this, et cetera, et cetera. It would be a lot different. So I think the content might have been good, but I think I would, as I said, it would have been twisted from um, from the the stuff you wrote at the end to the beginning of the uh, email. Yeah, and even if it's not really in their interest to do an ad or they haven't considered it, I think personally the curiosity factor. You don't really get to know what happens based on super ad. You hear like, you know, oh yeah, they sold out of this product or something. Yeah, cool. Like you'd hope that would happen, but you don't hear the website traffic trebled. You don't get to see how many active watches there were. You don't get to see how many times that video got tweeted to how many viewers and all that stuff. So if if the ad network, presuming that's who we are, can send you that information, I would I would want to know that to see what the benchmark is, and then I yeah. can base well, oh yeah, our competitor did that. Like they're getting this then, and are we getting that? You know, you can go from there. So I think like the curiosity factor to flip it like you said, would probably have helped. Uh, probably what they said at the start, I think this is, our own, this is our own teammate, so I'm being PC here. I think we can cut all of that start bit. I, I don't think it adds too much. I think we were trying to sort of be personable and that yeah. type of thing. I don't know if it helped too much, but to a certain persona who likes less brevity than I do, yeah, I think, I think that works. Yep. All right, any last thoughts or should we go to the next round? Go to the next one, but I have to have a talk with Nick now after reading that email. No, no, you don't. You want to see his last one. So round two, um, I basically pictured you in a sense. Um, so I've said to the to the uh, contestants, Nick and Michelle, think of um, a, a CEO, think of um, a brand new sales leader who's got something of a sales team, but it's not, um, you know, they're the first sales leader hire, basically. It doesn't matter what company size they're in. Let's assume maybe 100 people, but they're a brand new sales leader. And they've got to like grow the team. They've got to grow certain metrics like average deal size and, and all those things, like like any sales leader probably would. Talk to them and try to sell them sales engagement software. So basically like us, something that a rep would use to do uh, more activity, quicker, faster, better, all that kind of stuff. So Michelle's gone with, in a subject line, follow up from Convo with Tom. So off the bat, what do you think of that one? Follow up from? Convo with Tom. That's not terrible. I don't. I don't mind that actually. I like. I. I. People hate when you write follow up in the subject line. Um, I've read articles where say you should never do it. I don't mind doing it, um, and I've been successful. Um, but she did got got personal in it. It's not 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 that bad actually. I, I wouldn't. I would. I would rather hear someone that says follow up from the conversation than just somebody that's randomly writing a random um, salesy thing. But yeah, I'm okay with it. You. I th- I think the words follow up don't necessarily matter in this. The the most the technique she's gone for is the convo with Tom tie in. So probably just that convo with Tom. Argu- yeah, could, arguably have- more intriguing, right? Because it's what about it? And and they're already gonna know it's a follow up when you're sending email, so you don't have to write that. Yeah. So arguably you've made a shorter one there with a bit more intrigue and then you've got more of the preview text available. So Small, small critique. I think that was more of um, like a lack of stuff to tie into the subject line. So she's gone with that technique. But anyways, so the email goes, Mike, I noticed that your team is growing by a certain percentage, you know, make something up. And based on our convos with other sales leaders, dot, dot, dot. And then the next line goes, moving from dash, finding a sales engagement platform that can grow with you reduces initial insert cost savings number, like dollar amount. Is this a challenge that resonates with you? What do you think? I almost like to ask, is the challenge in the first sentence again? 
So for me, it's you got. I would try and hit them with a challenge right at the beginning, then at the end, because if they don't read the whole email, they're not even to see what their chat with to see what the challenge you're trying to do is. So I almost, I always like to use that first three seconds, first sentence to almost find what their pain point is and see if that is something they have. Because if you can actually hit them with the pain point or the challenge in that first sentence, they will read your whole email. So I would have just twisted that. Overall, not a, not a bad. I actually don't mind the email. I just don't like waiting to the end to ask them if that's a challenge. One thing I noticed quite a lot in emails like this is um, I agree with what you said. Um, the There's a way that you can condense all of this without saying too little. So for instance, what, what I'm really bad at is every sentence I have has like 23 commas in it. I have to do it. The first bit you could do here is say, um, so to read it back, Mike, notice that your team is growing by a certain percentage and based on our conversation with other sales leaders, insert something. What you could do to condense the whole thing is, um, Sean, um, your your team's growing by 50%, comma, other sales leaders like that see X. Like that's one sentence, not two paragraphs in a sense. I, I yeah. kind of, I butchered that a little bit, but that that can kind of reduce a lot of this. So then the, the challenge piece is like the second sentence, not the very last bit. I think that's probably the only other bit. And obviously this one had um, a couple of little missing bits, which made it a bit harder to, um, to fill in a bit, but um, that was what I got from that. Yeah, no, I'm, uh, I'm, I don't mind that email actually. All right, good stuff. Yeah. So on to Nick, and and by the way, um, who at this point do you think's in the lead? So obviously that being Michelle's second email, who at halfway did you think was in the lead? I mean, I have to be biased. I mean, Nick's on my team, right? I don't want, I can't have a team member of my team uh, who reports to me. Um, I would say we're 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 fairly close, Solly. How about that? It was we're, within a point. Pretty... What? It was within one point. Yeah. Very close. All right. So we'll do Nick's email and then you can guess at the scoring. So his subject line is James, comma, time to scale up, exclamation point. What do you think? Personalized, James, time to scale up. I'd open the email. If I if I if I was if one of the challenges I had was scaling my company from a certain point, I would open the email. Okay. Um, I think it's a fairly weak one apart from, the, the, well, the use of the, your name is massive in this. I'm a bit 50-50 on if I like that or not. I, I think it kind of synonymizes with mass outreach, like putting the name in somehow. I, I'm open to being wrong about that. That's just my personal bias. But um, I don't know what else you I would have come up with. You using autoclose? They could have been, yes. Maybe Nick was <laughs> using autoclose for this. Or maybe he could have used like HubSpot for that. Marketers do yeah. that. They put like yeah. name 50% off or whatever. Um, anyway, so his body of the email goes, Hey James, saw that you're in the process of expanding your team on LinkedIn. Lots of competition in your industry and the demand is up there. And a new paragraph, getting a winning formula and getting it right from the very beginning is a foundational skill that a lot are missing. And you'll need the right sales engagement tools to avoid overspending. We're all about that optimized process. Let's talk scaling up. It's a little pushy with the scaling. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I mean, how many times did he mention scaling in that email? Uh, so expanding. Um, Twice in the last two, sentence, right? Yeah, three times, basically. Yeah, so I think that might be a little bit too much because it's a short email and you're mentioning the same. So I think they get the point. Um, not bad. I mean, I, these their emails, you got to think they're under these three minute crunches, right? So it's, it's not a bad email. I think, uh, actually, I think they're very, it's a very close competition between the two. It was again, down to one point at the end. I will, I will tell you. Um, so as I read this, I am um, the one thing that really does stand out. And again, under three minutes, under time pressure, you've got hundreds of people watching you. We'd all crumble, but, um, but they've done well yeah. to produce. Um, I think when you mention things like scaling up, it's a very mathematical percentage driven businessy thing to say. You have to then follow on in the same language and use stats and numbers and dollars and things like that, yeah. which um, obviously he kind of be making up. But um, I think that would have really helped. So for instance, to talk about scaling up, um, scaling the team up by 25% in Q1 is a lot more of a businessy sounding thing to say. Or a lot more yeah. of a relatable thing for the VP of sales to read. Or, uh, for instance, the role about that optimized process, let's talk scaling up, could be 
let me show you how one of our clients um, double quota attainment in Q2. Yeah. Right, I'm making that up, but I think that kind of attributes more to the theme of what they're going for in the email. Of the email, yeah. I'm, I agree with you. And I don't usually agree with you, all this stuff, so that's very uh, very different of me. Is, what have I done today? Are you all right? Nothing good? <laughs> all right. So, uh, so what do you think? Who came out on top there? So you thought it was close and it, it was at halfway. It was very much I, so at the end. I, I'm, I'm going to think that, um, I'm going to think Nick got defeated by a very, very marginal number. He did. He lost by a point. Wow. It was that close? Yeah. yeah, it was. Yeah. So, um, I think what we'll have to do next time is we might need a bit more time or a bit more of a specific person. So for instance, we could say it's me. But pretend I am the CEO of a hundred person company, et cetera. So um I, I actually think it should be me versus you. I don't want to embarrass you. <laughs> well, you're on the judging panel for the next one. I haven't even told you that yet. So that's one for another day. But you're on the judging panel. That'll be you're, fun. You're gonna be um uh, who, who's the old guy on it? Is it Len Goodman? You're gonna is it Len Goodman? I'm not I'm not up on my ducks with the stars judging panel. You have to take a look. Anyway, there you go. So, uh, so yeah, sadly, Nick got defeated by a point, valiant effort, but uh, it was his first ever webinar. So to do that under that pressure, kudos to him. He did a great job. And uh, I think we'll be doing this again with Michelle. There'll be a new challenger. You're on the panel. I'm hosting again. And uh, I'm excited to do that. But, but those are the emails, dude. So um, we've ran through the show today. Yeah. Well, thank you uh, so much for everyone in the audience that joined us today. Another great episode with Ollie. Um, also, thank you for everyone listening. Um, if you enjoyed the show, uh, never forget to give us that five-star review. Um, wherever you're listening from, let us know any guests you want us to bring on the show. And also subscribe so you never mix, mix, miss the next show. Thank you again and see you soon.